Hey everybody, we are teaching Gravity Sketch. This particular episode is all about using reference images in order to get pictures into your model. Some reference images would be used as a comparison. So if I'm trying to create a spaceship, an actual picture of the spaceship would be really useful to model from. We can also use these reference images as textures on the model. So if I want a picture on my car, or if I want a texture around my object, reference images will allow you to bring those pictures into the environment. So if you're using a Steam VR window-based system, Gravity Sketch will make a folder in documents called, surprise, surprise, Gravity Sketch. In there is a folder for reference images. Any JPEG or PNG should be able to be put into that folder. When you look at reference images, which is the third item in your blue menu, it's going to display whatever files it finds. If you're using the Quest or another system, Oftentimes, you will be able to, for example, USB to a computer to access the files. Likewise, you can connect to the internet. Gravity Sketch uses a Launchpad account to actually add pictures to your folders. You can actually access your uh, Launchpad folder and look any pictures in there. Once they're in there, Regardless of what system you're in, you're just going to use your main hand and actually grab the picture you want and bring it into the environment. Just like with our regular models, I can grab that and stretch it to be whatever size, however I want to use it. Now, it is tied to your headset and the controllers, not the model you're making. So if I start making an object here, if I move the object, doesn't affect the picture. Move the picture, doesn't affect it. If I move the entire environment, the model moves, but not the picture. The picture is stuck to your reference. So if I actually wanted to have a picture in there, I'll need to do what's called anchor. When you're holding a picture, you'll notice as I intersect it, it adds a little tiny anchor icon. You may not see it, it's part of the headset. Your blue controller will also, when I grab it, turn into a blue anchor. See if I can get close so you can see, blue anchor. I'm gonna get this into position. Blue anchor locks it into place relative to the model. So if I move the environment, you can see how the picture stays with the environment. I'm going to grab a second picture. Whoops. Put you back. This time we're going to grab this one. Now you can make multiple copies. Let's make them a little bit bigger. By holding it and then trigger leaves a copy of the picture right there. Now that picture, again, these are all to the headset, not the model, unless I grab one and then anchor. Grab one and then anchor. So now those ones are stuck, but this one, move you over here, is stuck with me. Anchored versus not anchored. You, at any point, you could grab one, blue button again, turns off the anchor, and now it's relative to me. So these would be the ones I'm using for, for looking at it. Does it look right? Reference images. Whereas this one is anchored to the sketch, it's actually now considered one of the models that I'm playing with. Anchoring, actually in this case, I grouped them. But because it's anchored, even if I move it, it's still considered part of the model, not part of the user's workspace. The final fun thing to do with these, now that I've got these pictures in place, if I look at my palette, it's actually adding the pictures to the palette. So I'm gonna select it. Now you can see I've got the pattern as part of my object. So if I paint, 
you can see how that picture, that pattern, is part of the object itself. And we'll look at how the different tools let you use different patterns to control whether it repeats or not. But that is now I could even grab an existing piece and recolor it to use that texture. Additionally, the texture is not locked to the image. Even though it's white, if I just change the, the color, you can see how it retains the pattern. It actually retains the texture. It's part of the model itself. So when it's exported, it will try to retain that appearance. So not only does it take a color and a picture, but we can then tint that picture to be any shade that we want to make variations. Let us know if you have any questions. Let us know what you think. Let's get rid of that one for now. But this is using reference images inside of Gravity Sketch. Just copy them into the appropriate folder, and they will either show up on our blue menu to just grab and use, or they'll show up in our palette as textures once you've got them in the environment. Let us know if you have any questions about this. We're getting to some interesting, fun stuff. My suggestion is to just play with it for a little while. Try it and see how it affects the different tools and how the different tools can take advantage of this. So you'll notice the words are all moving together, but not this guy. He's not anchored. Have fun. We'll see you next time. Have fun with Gravity Sketch.